Hello, welcome to the Creator Die Podcast. Today, I'm here with my special guest, Sean Inkpulp Crystal. How you doing? Good. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm super pumped to talk to you. You're definitely the inspiration behind this podcast. So, Oh, really? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I guess uh, before we go into your story, um, can we start with uh, why you started the Inkpulp Podcast and what your kind sure. of mission statement was for that? Yeah, when I first started it, I was at a place in my career where I'd been working for Marvel exclusively probably about four years at that mm. point. Um, and I was teaching full-time and running the, the sequential art department at SCAD Atlanta. Mm. And I, I was really trying to, to get my career up to the next level. I mean, I was working steadily, so I wasn't like trying to break in. But I was trying to get my footing and and not just be like like raise my my profile a bit, not be such mm -hmm. a no name. And I, I didn't know like I, it's not like I had a lot of time on my hands. I was doing a lot with the teaching and the working, and I was using social media not well. Uh, and I was going to cons, and I was around all the right people, but I just felt kind of stuck. So. Uh, what I start, what I, I discovered podcasts, and as I was working, I would just listen to them, mm -hmm. and I, it was mainly podcasts run by comedians, and that's mm -hmm. when I discovered Mark Maron before he like really became a huge podcasting sensation, mm -hmm. and I just listened to him and comedians telling these very personal stories about their lives, and it just sounded to me like these are the conversations I have when I'm at cons with my artist friends, mm -hmm. and we're just sitting there drawing. So I was like. I could, and I knew like when I talked to people, people like open up to me and I, and I could, I could have conversations. I was good one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I wasn't so good back then in like a group setting, but one-on-one -on -one I was good. So I decided like, Hey, comics doesn't have anything like this right now. And I'm good at talking to people. And when I'm at a con, I could just record. So uh, my, my mission statement was I will only do this live in person i didn't want to record through the internet mm. this is before the days where where video recording was really an option and yeah. and then video podcasting was even was even rarer of an option so um as fortune would have it one of my grad students at the time was a um a musician and a sound designer and he owned a video editing business so we were just, i just mentioned like yeah i'd love to have a podcast and he was like, oh, you can. And I was like, I don't know how to do it. And he, he was like, oh, it's not that hard. I was like, I just don't have time to edit and do all this. And he kind of said, well, look, let me let me do that. Let me edit that for you. And, and put it. I wasn't the editing I needed because, like I said, I wanted an authentic conversation. So I didn't yeah. want the, the conversation to feel edited. But I needed someone to, like, put an intro in at the beginning, an outro song at the end, and get it onto the Internet somewhere. And he, mm -hmm. he had experience doing that. And I was like, all right, well, how much is it going to cost me to, to get the equipment I need? And he took me to Amazon, and it was like under 500 bucks to get everything I needed. So I got it, and I started. And um, this was at a time where I was, I was in a pretty dark place. I mean, I was working incessantly with two full-time jobs, two little kids at home. And I, I wasn't feeling like I was getting where I feel like I got in the door, but I feel like I was just stuck like at the entrance, like in the lobby. So yeah. uh, it, I was struggling a lot. And uh, so th this, that was sort of the, the voice that was behind this. So I wanted to get the authentic stories from these people. It, it was never meant to be a hype machine. It was never mm -hmm. meant to be like, what are you working on? And let's promote yeah. that project. Like that's not what it was. It was really like, I want I want to talk about the person, what it's like to be a creative person, what it's like to live with the challenges we face as creative people. So that's where it started. Yeah, I mean, I definitely relate to everything you're saying because even the name of this podcast, Creator Die, comes from exactly what you're talking about, and like the fact that we're the type of people that. It's weird, like, even if you're not an emotional person as an artist, you're the type of person that, like, doesn't, can't be happy in every single environment, like, whether it's working at a grocery store or being a lawyer, like, it's very specific circumstances that you need to kind of feel fulfilled. 
And yeah. that leads to a lot of like, I don't know, like a, like this, a life that's like kind of chaotic until you find what works for you. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. It's, um, it's something I don't think people can understand who aren't creatives. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I think from the outside looking in, it looks very entitled to be like, I'm not happy yes. unless I'm drawing. But yeah. when you have this drive in you and you have this, this artist in you, it, it's, it's consuming and it's, you feel like it's your purpose. And when you're yeah. anything you're doing that's not helping push that forward feels like it's in the way and it's holding you down and it, it's hard. It is hard. Um, yeah. And, and I think that's a hard thing for people to grasp when they're from the outside looking in. It's not a job for us. It's not a, I mean, it is a job and it is a career, but that's not what drives us to do it. It's, yeah. it's a deeper, deeper calling. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And yeah, I agree with everything you're saying. And I think that especially <laughs> people, for some reason, I don't know if it's always true because I think uh, listening to your podcast really dispelled the myth in my head that anyone had it easy. I think everyone is like this journey is not easy on anybody. I agree. And and that's yeah. what the podcast was really kind of um, putting out there. Uh, mm -hmm. I know I know a ton of amazing artists like I, I know some of the best artists in the world. And their work, you look in their career and you look at them, you're like, oh, you, you should be like living high. And, and, and a yeah. lot of them are, but it's not to say they didn't go through something really difficult to get there. And it's not to say they don't have their moments. I mean, uh, luckily I, I have a good, good, uh, a friend crew. I mean, on the Ink Paul podcast now, it's me, Mateo Scalera and Eric Kennedy. And, you know, there'll be a time where one of us will just be like, Hey guys, I'm, I'm struggling with something. And we're there for each other to talk us through it. But yeah. when you don't have that, it can be very lonely. And I think that's where I was coming from when I formed the podcast. Like I had friends, but I also was so consumed with work in terms yeah. of my comics work, my teaching work and having little kids at home. Like I, I just didn't even feel like I had anyone to talk to. I didn't have the time to have those conversations. And I think that subconsciously by creating the podcast, I was giving myself that that opportunity to have those conversations. So I think for me, selfishly and subconsciously, I was trying to heal myself through it mm. by relating to others and, and learning. I wasn't alone with this. Okay. And one of the things I wanted to ask you is this is something I've gone through recently. You know, the, the hardship and the, you have like a ability to be, you know, the people, uh, Eric and Mateo make fun of you on the podcast because you can get <laughs> so excited, but you know, I listened to the podcast and I went through a lot of the same stuff you went through and you know, that stuff can start to change you at one point. Like if you go on feeling like you're losing too long, you can yeah. start becoming a different person. Did, how does, how did the journey change you? How did, yeah. how didn't it change you? And how were you able to like either reclaim yourself or remain able to be excited about stuff? You're right. Um, it, it did become an issue with me. I, I, um, I re like, I, if, if I subconsciously created the podcast to try to help heal myself and like create my own therapy through podcasting, uh, I think I, I got to a point where, I was pulling people down to my level mm. instead of raising mm -hmm. myself up to others' levels. And I don't mean the guests. I mean like the audience because I was realized like at first it was like, oh, everyone relates and understands. And I just, I reached a point where I was in my life. I was like, I can't keep living like with this dread hanging over me. And I yeah. started with like therapy and self-help books. And, and I was learning about like positive thinking and, and like happiness being a choice and all these things that I would mm -hmm. hear before and be like, that's all bullshit. But now I was yeah. listening to it for the first time, like really letting it in. And I started to look at myself like, Oh my God, I'm the problem. Like mm -hmm. I, I was feeling these things and it, it, I wasn't intentionally the problem and I wasn't like blaming myself. But I was like, I have to change this. Mm -hmm. And that was at a time. So the podcast kind of like 
fizzled for a little bit. And as I stumbled around trying to figure out what it's going to be now, because I, I started doing the positivity thing and I just noticed like if I said one negative thing, that's where all the comments would be. And I was like, oh my God, I have to work to raise people up around me, not bring them wow. down. I'm just spreading like low vibrations and, and negativity and sadness when I really could use this to be doing the opposite. So it took a while to figure out what I was doing. I mean, I, uh, a few things happened. One, um, everyone's careers and com well, conventions changed. They became much busier for the creative community. Um, they, they weren't as casual as they used to be. And all of my, like, like my school of, uh, like, uh, class, I guess is a better word. My class that I came in with, um, were all starting to become superstars. And mm -hmm. so getting guests was harder and harder. And I'd set up like three or four for a weekend and I'd be lucky if I got one. And oh, I, wow. I still, just because people got pulled in a million directions, it was like, well, yeah. I got invited to a dinner with an editor who wants to talk about a project. I'm like, oh yeah, you got to go do that. Um, so, and it's, and I still was insistent that I didn't want to do this online because when you're recording a, an audio only podcast through the internet, it's so easy for people's attentions to be diverted. I mean, like yeah. if I start surfing the web, you'll see, you can see me. Yeah. You know, um, and also when you see another human, even on a screen, you feel you're engaged. But when you're just yes. talking, it's like, oh, you don't need to see me. I can do other things while I'm talking. Um, so I didn't want to do that. And so then I started, I was like, all right, well, let me do like seasons. I was like, because instead, because I was doing it once a month and I was like, let me do seasons. And what I'll do is I'll take a trip and I chose Portland, Oregon as my first trip to do so. And I'll go out there and just my whole goal is recording podcasts. And that was great for that season, but it, you know, it, it cost a good bit of money and I was getting busy. It was just harder to plan those trips. And I think it was also just harder. Like I was still as a host, I wasn't what I used to be and I didn't know what I was going to be. So I don't think those were bad episodes, but it just didn't feel like the voice of the show was there. It was, it was changing. Mm -hmm. And then COVID hit and, you know, traveling became that you new, know, not an option. And yeah. that's when everyone I know, we were just getting video equipment. We were like, we're trapped in our studios. We're going to work all day. Let's just hang out and draw yeah. and, uh, we all had cameras and recording equipment just right in front of us so we could communicate. And I was like, if I just hit record, I've got a podcast. Yeah. So that podcast became the COVID Chronicles. And that mm -hmm. was just me hanging out with artists, drawing and talking. And I was trying to interview them while I was drawing. It, it was just like I couldn't do both well. I could either mm -hmm. draw and talk about the art side of things well or... Or I could talk about some personal shit and not draw as well. So that, that was challenging. And I mean, it served its purpose. It got us through COVID and it kept me putting out material. But yeah. shortly after COVID, because we got so used to hanging out and seeing friends on camera, Eric reached out one day. He's like, hey, let's hang out, me, you, and Maddie. Because, I mean, the three of us go way back. We, and yeah. we're just like, we're like this crew. We, we used to do every show together. And, you know, with our art dealer, he'd be like, I can get, you know, people rooms and he could get us flights. And he was like, I need some people to share rooms. And we were just told him, we're like, Jay, put me, Eric and Mateo in the same room every time. It's fine. Like, we love being together. There, we, we room well together. We do cons well together. So we just were, we were a crew. So when Eric said, let's hang out, we're like, all right. So we hung out just to talk, not to draw, but just to catch up. Eric yeah. was like, let's record this. Like we were like talking for 20 minutes. He was like, let's record this. And so we did. And we recorded. We're like, that was really fun. That was like funny and informative. And it was like, oh shit, this is awesome. And I was like, I'll put that out on my channel. And then it was like, okay, let's do it again next week. And we, it just, it just became an organic thing to, mm -hmm. to where it really grew into, I think, well, I know the most successful version of the podcast to date. So it took yeah. me, you know, like 10, 12 years to figure out what the show should be. I think the yeah. first few years of interviews are, 
are some of the best interviews yeah. out there. Yes. But what it is now is, it, first off, it's people laugh and people enjoy it. And the engagement yeah. we get from that is so much better and so yeah. much stronger and deeper. So, uh, you know, now we've got running jokes and, and the guests we're getting on now is, is crazy. And the numbers we're doing now. And we hired an editor just a few months ago to cut social media clips for us and, and, uh, put the podcast together. And it's been like, I feel like next year it's a thing. Like at New York Comic Con this year, Mateo and I just person after person stopping by like the podcast is awesome. I mean, Mateo wow. is walking down the street and someone just screams out, Mateo Scalera, love the podcast. Like wow. I know Mateo is a rock star of an artist and his name is known, but yeah. his face is now known because of the show. And the same yeah. thing happened to me at Dragon Con. I was walking down the street and I just hear ink pulp. And I was yeah. like, Oh shit, this is catching on. So, uh, the creative community loves it. Like, yeah, we have tomorrow Umberto Ramos is we're releasing. Oh that. shit, dude! I'm telling wow. you. So at New York Comic Con, Umberto came over, Todd McFarlane's people came over, and a few wow. other creators came over. We recorded with Umberto. It comes out tomorrow. We recorded with Todd McFarlane. Jesus comes out Christ. January first, and oh uh, right God. now we're we're locking down a a whale. So um. It's been awesome. But we still, while we're having those successes, we've all agreed only one guest per month because the show yeah. is us. And that's what people <laughs> love. So it, it's been great now. Like now it's just, it's, it's so fun to do. We have so much fun doing it. And like I was just in Abu Dhabi for a con with Mateo mm -hmm. and everyone knows the podcast. Wow. And like all the artists in the community. So all week and we're like, Oh, that's going on the podcast. So we're, we're like recording video clips. So we, when we do this recap, we can put on the podcast. So it's become something really exciting for us. Wow, man. That's, you know, it's crazy that like, you know, you can do these things in order to advance your art career. But I think that as time goes on and these things become solidified as like a part of culture, you realize this is a part of your creative output. This is a part of Absolutely. your your legacy. And the other thing that I really, really love, and I know you don't do it on purpose, but I felt like when I first started listening to your podcast, it was years after. And I felt, and it was at that time when like Rick Remender, it was on fire. Image was on fire, Walking Dead. And there was almost no negativity in comics. And your podcast, I'm not saying it was negative, but you counterbalanced the what felt like fluff right with, right right yeah and, and then that, now, that was that was my thing i mean the reason i wanted to do it was to be authentic i wasn't putting yeah. on a show of being down I, I was like people like everything was and especially in the days of the internet i, I looked around i was like everything was artificial everything was yeah was uh um, was created i mean the the image of people online was curated and created and and it was like there was nothing real anymore. And that's what resonated with me about Marin's podcast was I was hearing real human stories. Mm -hmm. And in an age where, and it's only gotten worse, the like the inauthenticity of everything has yeah. gotten only worse. So I still think we keep that in the new version. We're just authentically three friends talking yeah. shit and talking about art. And so I think there's some real authenticity to that as well. No, definitely. And it's like an authenticity because I think before it was an inauthentic, inauthentic, like perception of success. And now it's almost like an inauthentic negativity yeah. where it's like people have gone out of their way to be negative to the point where it's like, yes. how do you live like this? And the thing that I think, I think the podcast would be great regardless, but I think really the thing that is so great about you three is that you guys are heavyweights artistically, but you guys are fucking fun and, yeah. and it's hilarious. And like, my wife is like, I'll, I'll be working and I'll listen. And my wife's like, you're a fucking idiot. Cause I'm just laughing my ass off at like <laughs> things you guys do when like the screen goes black and white. And so it seems like you've <laughs> always been able to offer what the industry needed at a, at a specific time where it wasn't getting that just by going through your journey. And I think that's like, so like badass like you offer something the community needs at a moment where literally no one else is doing what you're doing i think well, that's just I think, sick i really appreciate that that's great to hear uh mm -hmm. i never thought of it that way but i can see what you're saying 
Um, yeah. And, you know, we, I realized like getting back to like always being like on, on the like low vibration, the, the downside of things, I, we are fun. I mean, I know this about Mateo, me and Eric, like I know we're fun. But, like this whole Fratelli Brothers thing was just a joke between me and my friend. And it's like, it's an industry thing now. Like, yeah. like there, people talk about Fratelli shit all the time. So I realized like when, when like, we're magnetic that way and mm -hmm. and i would always keep that in and and like in abu dhabi we just let it out and we had <laughs> i mean we had 35 artists who we didn't know just wanting to be around us at all time i mean they started wow. calling us the back of the bus crew because everywhere they bust us to me and mateo and ramon perez was with us we're in the back and everyone started loving like how fun and silly and ridiculous we were being yeah. And it just became a thing. And, and I realized on that trip, like, like this is what being positive and up about. It's not about, like, always, like, pretending to be happy. It's just about, like, just shining your light out there and, and, and finding the fun. I mean, there yeah. was – we were getting bussed back from this desert safari we were on. And Mateo, 10 minutes into the ride of an hour and a half ride, was like – Oh shit, I gotta pee really bad. And I was like, oh man, bro, I'm sorry. He's like, oh, I'm gonna try to hold it. And like 10 minutes later, I could just see he was starting to get, like, it was becoming painful. Like he was pinching his cells, trying not to pee. So, like, I down a bottle of water. I'm like, here, bro, you got the bottle if you need it. And we're in the back of the bus again. And, and, Ramon's kind of picking up. He's like, what's going on? I was like, dude, it's bad. Mateo's got to pee really bad. And then the the girls who are sitting with us heard it too. And we just all start jamming at Mateo, like laughing and, and making fun of him. And he jumps right in. So it's like we turn this thing that was, I mean, a horrible thing to have to feel like to hold your piss for an hour and a half when you're dying of pain sucks. Yeah. But to yeah. have it happen this way makes it better. So when yeah. we pulled up to the, <laughs> to the hotel um and, and mateo had asked the bus driver can you can you stop i gotta go like it got bad like when he started walking up to the bus that's when everyone's like what's going on so when we f and the bus driver was like no we're almost there and it was like 20 minutes away and he was like fuck <laughs> man i'm not gonna make it so we get to the hotel and everyone knows he has to go i was like mateo just run just run go like get off the bus so he gets up and starts like quickly moving the front the whole bus erupts in applause and it is like oh, cheer Mateo. And so I filmed it. <laughs> I filmed the whole thing. And oh, then <laughs> he runs off the bus. And like five minutes later, I get a, a video of him. Like all I can see is the wall, but you just hear him pissing like, like a <laughs> fucking horse. And he's saying the funniest shit. So the next episode we record is going to be a recap of that show, but we're going to put all that video footage in there. It's going to be hilarious dude that's so, like, too I mean, good yeah like we had like world famous artists just like loving us like i don't know if you know perneal i think it's olam she's got mm -hmm. like a million followers she became like our best friend of the weekend she always wanted to be around us and oh. we were talking about the podcast all weekend so it was it was a riot so i just that's learned cool. like if if my podcast originally unintentionally was bringing people down it's certainly elevating people up now yeah and and it's yeah. doing better because of that I feel and, and that's I love so doing sick. It. Yeah, yeah, that's it's, it's sick. Pretty fantastic. So I have to ask: in the order of things, did success come first or positive thinking come first? Positive thinking. The thing is, I think the success was there. Mm -hmm. I was looking at mm -hmm. it wrong. Oh, wow. So, uh, and I do like look. I look at someone like Scotty. I don't know if you know Scotty or if you've ever talked to Scotty, Scotty Young. Mm -hmm. Scotty is just, you put him anywhere, everyone wants to be around him. Yeah. He's this loud voice of joy at all times. Yeah. Now, when I interviewed Scotty, we found out he's had some serious struggles and he has depression and all that shit going on. But yeah. I just looked at like how Scotty's like joyfulness attracts people to him and his career explodes not just because of that but it helps it and if and, and i look at people who are more negative minded and it, and and how it may have held them back and it reflected on myself so mm. you know like i'm start like next year I, like in the past three weeks my career feels like it's about to explode i got three gigs that fell in my lap 
that could open up the world for me. And mm -hmm. I spent all these years trying to get to the point where that happened. And like you said in the beginning, it wears you down and, and you start to get negative about it. But I found a way to just be positive, not worrying about that shit. Yeah. And just focus on doing my work and, and doing my thing. And so I, you know, I think the, I know the podcast helped lead to some of these opportunities. And that, that again is the positive thinking. So yes, I, in my self help journeys, I did kind of accept and embrace this idea that we vibrate at frequencies and those frequencies attract similar frequencies. So if yeah. you're vibrating low and depressive, you attract low and depressive. If you vibrate high and joyful, you attract high and joyful. And the successes come from attracting the high and joyful much more than the low. I feel it. Yeah, that's that's really important. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree. I'm trying to think of like how to add to that, but it's like perfect to in and of itself yeah and i mean again that's just something i i had to learn it took me a long time some people it was more natural um i mean mateo is always a very positive person he yeah. definitely has had his struggles in life i know being his like close friend that like he's had some rough stuff going on but i mean uh, th that is a human being that that i i just look at and learn from constantly i mean in yeah. abu dhabi like just watching him interact with people like Mateo is probably at, at the, like one of the most celebrated comic book artists right now, yeah. arguably the best at, 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 at doing it. And he treats no one differently and he doesn't mm. act as if he's in that position. Yeah. Um, you know, he's just, I'm me and what I do doesn't mean anything. I'm just me. And, he treats any new person with the same level of absolute interest and respect. Wow. And um, it's, it's, it's really wonderful to see. That's crazy. Yeah. And you look at someone like him, I feel like his output, which is absolutely insane. comes yeah, from the fact that it's not right. <laughs> no, it's not. And it's not, I feel like it fair, comes from the, right. <laughs> no, it's not. It's like, he's always posting every day, just a new badass piece, like daily for years. Yeah. yeah it doesn't slow down. He's insane. But I feel like that comes from the fact that, like, he's able to keep his energy and protect his energy by, like, being the way that he is. So Yeah, I think you're right about that. I definitely do. That's cool. So in your journey with everything that you went through, because, I mean, I'm going to give an overview of what I know, and then you can correct it. You've gone from, like, skateboarding, mm -hmm. punk rock, hardcore. You're from the East Coast. And then... From there, I know you were like uh, doing bartending and went mm -hmm. to school, mm -hmm. and then you kind of had a journey, and then you became a teacher. So, out of your entire journey, like, what are things that you think if you could go back, you would have done differently, or change, or lessons that you could give, even if you wouldn't change it for yourself, if you could give it to someone else? It's good, a uh, good question. Um, I would, I would try to change my mindset i would okay. believe in myself more i would do things uh like you know it's really hard for me to do a creator own book now because i have to support a family and i mean it was a different industry when i was trying to get in so so it's hard to say if you know we didn't have the avenues back then to do your own creative work uh, i mean there were people doing it but it was even harder back then mm -hmm. um so yeah, I, th I think it would have just changed my 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 mentality um, because mm -hmm. looking back, every obstacle I faced taught me a very valuable lesson. So mm -hmm. instead of feeling like life was constantly punching me down, uh, I think it would have been healthier to. It's like now when an obstacle comes my way, I step back. I might get upset for a minute, but I step back and be like, all right, what am I supposed to learn from this? And when you start seeing failures and, and obstacles as lessons, you start embracing them and they start mm -hmm. lifting you up instead of holding you down. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's something I would have changed. Um, I have been very fortunate in my career with, with where, what I've done and where I've gotten. And I don't think I thought about it that way a few years ago. Mm -hmm. So I think, I, I think, like I said earlier on, I was my obstacle that I had to fix. I feel it. And like, do you feel like in your interpersonal relationships that those shifts in your mindset have allowed you to be like a, 
like better off the court as on the court has Much everything better. i feel it That's yeah cool. like like i said like from new york like doing new york recently and then abu dhabi con like i've become very friendly with a lot of artists who i really respect and admire and mm -hmm. i wouldn't have been open they wouldn't have seen me the way they saw me and wouldn't have been interested in talking to me the way they are mm -hmm. were mm -hmm. recently so yeah I, th I think it's like having this new mindset has definitely affected my my um relationships with people in a much more positive way that's super sick and you have like a, a a finger on the pulse of the the culture of the industry that i feel like is a little bit ahead of what everyone else might be talking about do you feel like coming out of covid there's a lot of different things going on that are affecting the industry negatively but culturally when you like meet other artists at new york when you interview people I don't know. It seems like when people interact with you or when I watch your stories, I feel more optimistic about where everything is going. Good. Do you feel yes. that way when you interact with people? Yeah, absolutely. The, see, the thing is um, COVID hit at, at, at a time for me where I was learning to be positive. Mm -hmm. So like I said, I saw like publishing shut down. I had mm -hmm. already like the industry had turned its back on me already. I wasn't getting work before COVID hit. So mm -hmm. I was already in a position of like, I got to find my way. I got to get my footing. I got to, I got to make a living, but mm -hmm. then it hit everyone else. And so, like mm -hmm. I said, I got up every morning and I came into my studio and I produced, mm -hmm. I, I saw an opportunity that I'm going to take this time to really buckle down and learn to paint, which mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. And yeah. now my career is dramatically better because of it. I mm -hmm. recorded episodes with my friends of us drawing and day after day i saw people posting like life sucks i'm i'm stuck in my house i'm uninspired and it was like yeah see that's a choice and and yeah. that, that's like i would probably like i worked harder during covid i didn't have a day off like my wife was forced to be home because you know we were locked on lockdown yeah. i have an outside studio in an office building where no one was coming yeah. So I got up every morning. I went for a run outside. My gym was closed. Like I didn't let anything give me an excuse. Mm -hmm. And and I grew during that time period. So um yeah, I still see it now. Like I see first off, the the one good thing I I, I did, I stopped caring about the industry. Mm. I started caring about the medium. Mm-hmm. And I see it every day. I see the complaining, who said this, and what writer said this, and I'm going to take a side. And, and even if you step back further outside of the business, it's the world we live in. Like Everyone's talking about what's not fair, what injustice has been done. None of yeah. this is productive. None yeah. of these people are like, you know, it's like, like I, I don't know. I'm just thinking of causes that, that were like people were shouting online, like, like, like Black Lives Matter. I'm all about the idea behind that. But it became a thing where, like, if you didn't have a black circle on your Twitter or on your Instagram as your profile. The lynch mob was coming. Right. They came after you. It was like, wait a minute. Other than making your circle black, what are you doing to help this cause? Nothing. <laughs> you're screaming into a void. You're fighting people <laughs> in a void. You're basically losing time and energy arguing with people that will yeah. it will never end in a resolve it's like if you really really care quietly go do something and get back to work yes so it's it's so it's the phones it's social media it's everyone's on a team and if you're not on that team you're you're the enemy and it's i just stopped paying attention to it it's like i remember people like if I drew like a sexy woman or if I said something on podcast, it's like, aren't you afraid of being canceled? I'm like, no, yeah. you can't cancel someone who doesn't care. Exactly. Like, it's just, it's silly. And to like, I'm going to let people censor me with the threat of a social media account being shut down. Like, come on. Like, yeah. what can you, like, so my, my choice is to just, be me and and like i'd rather use my social media to teach people some art shit nice. so that's what i do i don't make it no like no one knows my political stances on anything because it's uh, it's not what my I, I, my social media is my business platform and yeah. what i want to do is spread knowledge and spread yeah. optimism like 
this is the mm. most exciting time to be a comic yeah. book artist. Yeah. Sure, the industry is going through some difficult times. Yeah. The medium isn't. Yeah. And if we change our mindsets and create new paths and new avenues, like COVID, I created Ink Pulp Instruction. Yeah. A lot of yeah. people just sat around and complained. I yeah. created something. Like, sure, yeah. publishing got hit and it's scary. Like, how yeah. are we going to make a living? Well, you can either create something and try to funnel it into a career or just sit around and complain. Yeah. So, and, and I don't fault the people for that. I, I mean, I understand the temptation for that because if you live in your phone, that's the reality. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah, I see it every true. day, just the, the like, the, the the conversations that I mean my social media's got nothing to do with it. I'm gonna spread yeah. knowledge. I'm gonna spread yeah. some joy. I'm gonna spread some fun. I mean yeah. so yeah, I think um having a positive mindset in that area is really important. I feel it. And and I well, wish I wish well, everyone could see that. Like yeah. the world would be a better place if we all just stopped. First yeah. off, let's listen to other people. Yeah. You know, the idea, like, if you don't agree with me 100%, you're the enemy. Like, no, may maybe respect the fact that they're entitled to their opinion. You may not agree with it, but allow them to have that. Like, yeah. it's getting a little crazy. Uh, I totally agree. And I agree with everything you said about it. Because, and also, like, you know, just at a technological level, you know, it's one thing to say the universe gives you what you put out. But, like, literally on Instagram, if you're constantly putting out negativity or searching up negativity, you're going to get that back. It's going to be in your algorithm. So it like yeah. it takes uh, you yeah. even deeper. Yeah. Into yeah. That. It's, it's, it's a, it's a wormhole. And the other thing is the algorithm loves it. Like, yeah. So yeah. I understand like how people get pulled into it. Like, yeah, sure. I would probably perform a lot better if, if I started saying some negative shit, but yeah, that's not what that's not who I am. That's not what my my business is. That's not why I do art. I mean, yeah. I, I realized the one what I really can offer people. If like, why would someone stop at something I've posted to just yeah. say here's my art, and when they don't stop to look at it, you start to feel like your art isn't good. Yeah, I, I mean, first off, that's that's non plus equation. And, and secondly, you know, there's millions of artists posting work every day. If you yeah. want people to just stop because of your art, you got to be Kim Jong Ji. Like, yeah, you got to be on that level. But what? Why would someone stop at my page? I think about yeah. that, and yeah. it's like, oh, let me just let me give you a little tidbit, and it's like, yeah. okay, I'm going to try that. That's so smart. Why would someone stop at your page? That's like the perfect marketing advice. Uh, I, I know you have to go. There's one question that I, I really it. wanted to ask you that you, I think you are, you and a lot of your friends have made me not afraid to age. Like whenever Jim Mafood shares like you guys at dinner, like I'm like, <laughs> damn dude, I can't wait to have a great beard and be, what, how do you, how do you recommend someone stay? There we go. How do you recommend staying young and aging in a way that, cause you're not, you're like the coolest guy and like you're like 50 right like 51 and, yeah yeah and that and you make 51 super badass how can i do that? i appreciate that um i, I think part of it is a mindset like i mm -hmm. don't feel 51 mm -hmm. uh, i mean i i like i kind of when, when people refer to me as older i sometimes i take a step back like wait what oh yeah oh no i am i am you're right <laughs> but, but i don't feel like i am yeah. uh you know and i think part of that is i do take care of myself Oh, you know, yeah. I, I do eat like you see me at when I'm at cons, I eat like a fucking monster. Um, but at home, I eat pretty clean. I work out five days a week. Um, I meditate. I take good care of myself. Uh, and, and I think being positive helps with all that. Because uh, mm -hmm. like, look, I'll tell you, I do have aches and pains on a daily basis. Like that part mm -hmm. of aging is real. But <laughs> For sure. because I take care of myself, it's not as bad. Like, yeah. I see some other artists my age who don't take care of themselves. Like, like the idea of walking, like as much as we walk when we go to dinner sometimes is like, they're like, I can't do that. And it's Damn. like, you know, this is a sedentary job. Like yeah. working on comics, you're sitting in a desk all day for yeah. hours. Yeah. So you got to take care of yourself. Uh, and Jim does the same. Um, Mateo does the same. Mateo's younger. So fuck him. Um, <laughs> 
Eric, but yeah, I mean, I think it's just a mentality. Like, it's funny because when I was a kid, I thought someone 50 was a senior citizen. Yeah. And then you turn 50 and you're like, I feel the same. Like, mentally, yeah. I'm the same person. Mm -hmm. um, but also, one thing, and uh, this is something I'm thinking about more and more lately. I want to get back to a place where we respect the elderly. Yes. Because there yeah. is such wisdom in them. Yeah. Um, and, and I would love to see us culturally get, get back to that because, yeah. you know, the way people talk about old, old people and the, the way people yeah. treat them, it's like they write them off. It's like, man, you could learn so much from that person. Yeah. But, you know, also you asked about my excitement. Um, I, I'm a kid at heart. I've always been a kid at heart and I'm not afraid to be goofy and have fun. And I think that's the key. Like you gotta just like, when I'm with my friends, we have fun. And that's what that's what everyone at the in Abu Dhabi saw. Like we yeah. love to have fun. Yeah. So I think that's well, the key too. All right, man. Well, I want to respect your time. I know you got shit to do. I Thank really, you, I really appreciate, appreciate you coming through and dropping some wisdom and being super candid, man. I really this is gonna be one of my favorite episodes. Uh, oh dude, I'm so glad to hear that. This was a lot of fun. And if you if you I know I had to go a little bit early, but if you do want to record another one in the future, just reach out. I'll be happy to All do right. it. Will do man. We'll do. All right. Thanks man. Thank you, brother. Mm -hmm.